Jorge Reyna will be the starting quarterback for the Fresno State football team this fall. That was announced a couple of days ago. Reyna was the primary backup to Marcus McMarion last season. He only threw 12 passes, completing eight of them, but he did have a touchdown in the season opener against Idaho. Reyna will be a senior in 2019. He was part of Coach Tedford's first recruiting class two and a half years ago. Coach's Corner brought to you by Cooper Chase Construction. Here's what Coach Tedford said about the decision to go with Reyna. Quote, it's important going into the summer to have leadership at that position. Jorge had a really great spring. He has command of the offense. He has been here going into his third season. He has played his role well in the past and has earned the right to be the starting quarterback. And with that, we welcome in Jackson Moore, publisher of Bartboard.com. Jackson, thanks for coming in today. You're around the football team even more than I am. When did you know that Reyna separated himself from the other quarterbacks on the roster? Uh, I kind of felt that going into the season. I, in fact, I'd go almost all the back, way back to when he came in back in 2017. Uh, I thought he was probably going to be the guy, and it's funny how things work. Marcus McMarion comes in and had more of maybe the leadership abilities that led this team the last two years, but I feel like Jorge Reyna's had the arm strength since he got here, and they've really improved his uh, playmaking ability. They maybe honed him in a little bit so he's not throwing too many interceptions with that dangerous arm, but I felt pretty certain he was going to be the guy going into spring. So it's Reyna's job in 2019, but 2019 only because he'll be a senior this fall. So that means Fresno State will have an open competition in 2020 for the quarterback position. We know about Jaden Casey from Calabasas coming in that year, but does Nathan Lamb have a chance? He's from Tulare. Two weeks ago, he committed to the Bulldogs as a preferred walk-on. I know you talked with him. How was that conversation? Yeah, you know, he was in a situation where, you know, nowadays you're a quarterback, maybe you get four or five scholarship offers, but those schools that are offering you, they may offer 10 guys, and when one guy commits, you don't have that spot anymore, and that's what happened to Lamb. He had about five Division I scholarship offers and didn't have a place to sign, so to not only find a spot to go to college, not have to go to junior college, but to be right here in the Valley at Fresno State, he's really excited, and you look at that depth chart, you know, minus Jaden Casey, the other guys that are coming in, even if he's a preferred walk-on, his you know, analysis as a recruit is higher than the quarterbacks that the Bulldogs use scholarships to bring in. So really, Jaden Casey is going to be probably the most anticipated quarterback, but Lamb's not far behind. So the plan for him is to possibly get an opportunity, but nothing is guaranteed. I mean, when you're a preferred walk-on, that's the case, right? Yeah, based on the numbers, if the Bulldogs bring in two preferred walk-ons, which it looks like they will, another one with Lamb, one of those guys is probably going to get a scholarship. So Lamb's in a really good position given the circumstances. Another Valley player to commit to the Bulldogs recently is McKinley Lee, running back at Edison High School. Fresno State has a few players on its roster from Edison. I read your story when you said Lee mentioned going to the Bulldog games since he was in diapers. <laughs> Where does he fit in the backfield? Yeah, um, you know, it was funny. I talked to him, and he talked about how growing up, his mom put him in gymnastics, and he hated it. <laughs> he was the only boy in the class, but he learned how to do backflips, and he's got all this agility and athleticism that most players don't have, and he kind of credits it to that time. So he's only about 5'8 or so, but he's got a lot of dynamic moves. Uh, he's going to be able to move really well with the ball, and it's going to be exciting to see how he carves in a role because I think he's a lot better than probably what his recruiting ranking had him at. I think he cited Robbie Rouse as yeah. his hero, right? <laughs> Rouse turned out to be the all-time leading rusher in Fresno State history, but it's a crowded backfield right now. I mean, Ronnie Rivers is the guy. Jordan Mims, assuming he gets back from injury, can McKinley Lee make an impact right away, or does he have to possibly sit for a year, maybe longer? Yeah, right away, I'm not sure, but you look at maybe the top four guys, all juniors, so they may not be around very long for when Lee's maybe a redshirt sophomore, so he could be ready to make an impact there. We'll see what happens. The men's basketball team, Jackson, got a commitment this week from a local player as well. Daryl Edwards, Fresno High alum, transferring back after being at LSU the past two seasons. How big of a deal is that? And what do you expect from him this season? It is a big deal because it feels like he's really just the missing piece that this roster needed. They had a lot of help coming in in the front court. Uh, seven foot one, Asan Juf is going to be eligible. They have Chris Seeley transferring from Utah. They have a lot of more pieces with height that they didn't have last year, but then they lose Deshaun Taylor and Braxton Huggins, and so that's a whole different thing. But Edwards comes in and kind of fills that gap, and the Bulldogs have uh, Noah Blackwell and New Williams coming back. So you add Edwards in, it kind of rounds out the roster, and I think they've got a really good rotation and what should be a down year for the Mountain West. From a leadership standpoint, can Edwards take over the role that Deshaun Taylor held for the last few years? 
No, I think so. He's got a lot of experience. I remember watching him his senior year in the Valley Championship, and it seems like a really long time ago, and it was because he sat out a year. 2014. He had the injury this past year. where He should have been graduated by now, but he's going to get an extra year back. So, I mean, he's got more leadership and experience than probably anyone on the Bulldog roster, and uh, he's going to have an impact, I think, not only for that basketball team, but for probably the Valley with the things that he wants to do here. So he and Chris Seeley are the two guys, local guys, who transferred back to the Bulldogs from big-time programs. Last question for you, Jackson. Back to football. How surprised were you that neither Jeff Allison nor Mike Bell were drafted this weekend? You know, not terribly surprised. Looking at the mock drafts, it was kind of all over the place with all three of those guys. Um, but I thought the Bulldogs would at least one, maybe two, hopefully all three. And to get one, Keyshawn Johnson, I think he was the, the most sure bet out of the three. Um, he's not quite as down as far as some of the, the numbers at the combine. It wasn't a, a big gap between some of the other guys. So uh, Allison and Bell kind of hurt themselves a little bit, I think, at the Combine. But I think they're the guys that, once they're on the field, they're going to show that they do a lot more than those numbers say. Well, it is tough as an undrafted free agent to mm -hmm. make a lengthy NFL career for yourself. We put that list on the screen for everyone back in the segment with Paul Williams. Do you think of the guys who signed undrafted free agent deals that there's maybe a guy or two that could land on a roster and have a lengthy career? I think Allison and Bell certainly, I mean, assuming Bell gets that chance, I think those two are going to have a shot. Um, I'm really impressed with what they did at Fresno State, and they may have gotten knocked down a little bit through the process, but I think once they get their shot, they're going to take advantage of it. And as Paul mentioned, Jameer Jordan, I think he's in an ideal situation. If something happens with Tyreek Hill where he's not coming back, uh, Jordan could be that same kind of athlete that can maybe not be the Tyreek Hill, but be something similar that they can plug in. And in Jeff Allison's case, everyone just needs to be able to learn J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs>